OK, um, good morning, everyone. The program subcommittee is holding this meeting virtually. This meeting is being held using Microsoft Teams. A video of this meeting will be provided on our website in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. Preliminarily, I would like to review the ground rules for this meeting. First, all, micro all microphones should be muted. We ask that you hold all questions or comments until the end of each presentation. Please announce yourself by name when speaking so that any attendees on the phone can identify you. If you are joining the meeting by phone, press star six, star six to unmute yourself. Um, second, the public was invited to submit written comments on any agenda item up to 24 hours prior to the meeting. Those comments, if received, will be read by the Commission staff at the appropriate time. With that being said, Mr. Kelly, would you be so kind as to call the roll for those members in attendance? Uh, actually, I'm going to pass it on to Charlotte. She's going to run this one today. So, Thank you, Charlotte. Yep, thank you, Commissioner Greer. OK, um, when I say your name, um, you don't have to respond. I'm just going to call out each commissioner's name. If I don't call your name, please let me know. Um, OK, we have Commissioner Bula, Commissioner Her Cornwell, Commissioner Ferguson, Commissioner Merritt, Commissioner Hewitt, Commissioner Taylor, Commissioner Greer, and then by phone we have Commissioner McCarthy and Commissioner Lewis. Is there any commission members that I did not call? Great, thank you. Thanks, Charlotte. With that, um, we'll move on to the minutes for the program subcommittee. Did everybody receive a copy of the minutes for the program subcommittee? And has had an opportunity to review those. With that, could I get a motion to approve the minutes for the program subcommittee? So moved. Thank you. Ferguson. Thank you, Commissioner Ferguson. Could I get a second? A second, Commissioner Hewitt. Thank you, Commissioner Hewitt. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? So the minutes are approved. Um, we'll that now move on to the first item of our agenda, the Town of Denton Critical Area Program Comprehensive Review in Caroline County. Um, I believe that Ms. Annie Sekirik is the presenter. So with that, Annie, I will turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Um, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, and uh, again, I am Annie Sekarik, and I will now be presenting the comprehensive review of the Town of Denton's Critical Area Program. Um, I would like to point out that Mr. Don Mulrine is on the line, um, and he's here to represent the town and help answer any questions we may have. Um, so thank you, Don, for your time. OK, there we go. And uh, so for reference, uh, the town of Denton is located in Caroline County along the Chop Tank River, as indicated by the yellow star on this map. The town encompasses all three critical area land designations, intensely developed area or IDA, limited development area, LDA, and resource conservation area, RCA. In addition, a portion of the town's shoreline is mapped as a modified buffer area. For some background, the town of Denton is the seat of Caroline County. It began as a tiny settlement around 1781, and it quickly became a trade center for agriculture. In the days when commerce between the Eastern Shore and Baltimore was chiefly by water, Denton Wharf on the Chop Tank River was a busy loading point. The critical area law requires each local jurisdiction to review its entire critical area program at least every six years. Denton's existing program was approved in 2013. The existing program will be repealed and replaced with this proposed ordinance. The comprehensive update of the critical area program brings the town zoning ordinance into conformance with the requirements of the critical area law and criteria. Our office developed a model ordinance for counties and towns to use as a template when developing and updating their local critical area programs. The model ordinance provides all of the basic elements of the state uh, critical area regulations, including development standards, density and use standards, amendment procedures, variances and enforcement. Local jurisdictions can then customize and modify the model in order to meet local needs. However, 
It, however, any proposed alternative standards must be at least as effective as the state statute and regulation. The majority of Denton's updated program does not deviate from the model ordinance. However, the town has proposed to modify their local program in two areas in order to better accommodate their local needs. Both modifications are similar to language that the commission has previously approved in other programs. So the two modifications are outlined on page two of the staff report. The first modification is an opt-in provision that allows non-water dependent structures on piers for commercial projects in the IDA and for small scale renewable energy systems on piers in the critical area. This provision includes all of the applicable standards and restrictions found in the non-water dependent projects chapter of COMAR. Then the town elected to modify their growth allocation standards to allow new IDA to be less than 20 acres and to be located non-adjacent to existing LDA or other IDA. However, any growth allocation proposal submitted under these conditions must be served by public water and sewer, be located in a priority funding area, be consistent with the town's comprehensive plan, and have an economic benefit to the community. To reiterate, the commission has approved similar language in other local programs. And due to recent updates to the water dependent facilities chapter of the critical area regulations, commission staff identified a few areas within the proposed ordinance that require minor revisions. Additionally, the growth allocation floating zone standards must be updated to reflect the current law and regulations. Therefore, Commission staff has proposed revised updated language to be added and amended in the final text as described in attachment one to the staff report. These revisions include adding the non water dependent project definition, revising the language for applicable supplemental uses in order to reflect the updated water dependent facilities regulations inserting a new critical area chapter for the updated water dependent facilities regulations and revising the language in the growth allocation floating zone chapter of their zoning ordinance. Um, and I would like to note that there was a typo in the original attachment one and the correct chapter for the growth allocation floating zones is chapter 128-175. Um, the revised attachment has been uploaded into Microsoft Teams. So as the proposed comprehensive review is consistent with the critical area law and its regulations, commission staff recommends that the commission concur with the chairman's determination that this comprehensive review be processed as a refinement to the town's critical area program. Further, commission staff recommends the chairman approve this refinement with the condition that the recommended text edits described in attachment one of the staff report are incorporated into the town of Denton's zoning code within 120 days. So thank you, and I will now turn it over to Chair Greer. Um, thank you, um, Ms. Secure. Uh, one question that I have is the town, has the town reviewed the proposed changes and um, are they agreeable to those or, or do they have any concerns about any of the changes? Hi, this is Don Mulrin, Town Administrator for the Town of Denton. Yes, staff and I have reviewed the changes and we have no problem with making the necessary changes for this ordinance. Thank you, I appreciate that. So with that, I don't see any um, any questions in the chat. Do any of the other commission members have any um, any questions? No questions, looks like you guys are getting off easy today. So uh, was there anyone, were there any public comments submitted? There were no public comments for this. So with that, Commissioner Lewis, do I hear a motion that the commission concur with the chairman's determination that the comprehensive review of the town of Denton's critical area program may be processed as a refinement to the town of Denton's critical area program? Further, that the proposed changes are consistent with the purposes, policies, and goals of the critical area law and regulations and as such recommend the chairman approve the town of Denton's comprehensive review um, with the conditions and edits set forth in the revised attachment one to the staff report dated May 4th, 2022. And so long as such conditions and changes are incorporated into the town of Denton's critical area program within 120 days of the chairman's approval. Commissioner Lewis, do I hear that motion? Commissioner Lewis here, you do. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> and is there a second to Commissioner Lewis's motion? Second, this is Commissioner Ferguson. Thank you, Commissioner Ferguson. Um, all those members uh, in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? No, are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. And that moves us, I think, on to the second item on the agenda, which is also the town of Denton and its critical area map update. And Annie, I will turn it back to you. Thank you so much. Um, yes, so hello again. I'm Annie Sakarik, and I will now be presenting a minor update to the town of Denton's critical area map. So the proposed minor update consists of replacing the label buffer exemption area with modified buffer area or MBA on the town's critical area map to be consistent with the language in the updated critical area program, which I just reviewed in the previous presentation. This is a zoomed in map of Denton and the modified buffer areas are represented in blue. No changes to the 1000 foot boundary, the critical area designations or the previously approved MBAs are proposed. It is simply a label change. Comar was updated to use the term modified buffer area instead of buffer exemption area in 2012. Therefore, the map change is consistent with the critical area regulations. And just for your reference, a modified buffer area is an area of the buffer where existing development prevents the buffer from fulfilling its function. It's still the buffer, but it has alternative requirements that allow certain types of development without a variance. In Denton, the MBA includes a visitor center and a wharf. So because the change is consistent with the critical area law and regulations, Commission staff recommends that the Commission concur with the Chairman's determination that the Town of Denton's map update be reviewed as a refinement to the Town's critical area program. Further, staff recommends the Chairman approve the non-substantive map update as proposed. Thank you again, and I'll now turn it back over to you, Chair Greer. Thank you. Are there any questions from any of the Commission members? OK, again, you're getting off easy, so uh, I don't see anything. <laughs> it's, it's always a good feeling, isn't it? Um, I don't see any questions in chat either. And uh, just for the record, were any public comments submitted? There were no public comments submitted for the map update. Thank you. And so that brings us, I guess, to the motion. Commissioner Lewis, do I hear a motion that the commission concur with the chairman's determination? that the town of Denton's map update may, re, may be reviewed as a refinement to the town of Denton's critical area program. Further, that the proposed changes are consistent with the purposes, policies, and goals of the critical area law and regulation, and that the chairman approve the non-substantive map update as proposed. Commissioner Lewis here. Thank you, Commissioner Greer. So moved. And do I hear a second? <clears throat> Second, Commissioner Hewitt. Second by Commissioner Hewitt. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? With that, the motion passes unanimously. Congratulations to the town of Denton. Um, we will now move on to the third item on the agenda, which is the St. Mary's County Solar Development Projects in the Critical Area Text Amendment. And Lisa, I believe that you are presenting. Is that correct? Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Hewitt, before you uh, start, Bill Hunt, our Director of Land Use, has said he's being muted by staff. Can he be unmuted? He may need to comment on this. He's not muted by staff. Oh, okay, well, that's he, good to know. I'll, I'll he, let him know he's not muted. Yeah, we've been Bill, talking you there? to him. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Bill, are you are you able to to hear and speak? I've been talking to him in chat. Um. So I I if if he I guess if it. Bill, would it be OK then if uh, we proceed and then if there are any concerns, we can um, use the chat to communicate? Is that uh, OK? Commissioner Greer, it looks like he may have logged out. I'm not okay. seeing him in the um, the okay. attendees list. Oh, there he is. He's there back. He, is. he just said yes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Crazy. So with that, Lisa, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Chair Greer. Can everyone see my screen? Very good. 
Um, good, good morning, everybody. Um, again, this is Lisa Herger. I'm here to present the St. Mary's County refinement, um, which constitutes a text amendment to the zoning ordinance. And also with us, as you all know, is um, the planning director, Bill Hunt, is with us as well. Okay. Working on advancing the slide. Hold on, guys. OK. So on March 1st of 2022, the county commissioners approved ordinance 2022-06, which constituted several updates to the ordinance that had to do with solar energy systems. The county subsequently forwarded that approval to Chairman Deegan, who reviewed the changes and determined that the changes could be processed as a refinement to the county's program on April 18th. And then today we're seeking the commission's consideration of a concurrence with the chair's determination. So a quick review of some of the things that the county did in the ordinance include the following definitions that you see on your screen. So they added um, a definition for farmland of statewide important soils, um, solar commercial, industrial or institutional accessory, solar community, solar residential or agricultural accessory, and solar utility scale. They also uh, deleted and replaced the definition of prime agricultural soils, and now they allow solar major and solar minor minor as permitted uses throughout the code, and that would include the three critical area designations of IDA, intensely developed areas, limited development areas, and resource conservation areas. And finally, they amended parking standards and loading space standards. So in reviewing the refinement, we determined that um, the definitions that are both in our regulations in COMAR 270114, which is the chapter on renewable energy generating systems, which we just recently approved. Um, the uh, definitions are consistent with that chapter. And also um, the county code requires that both major and minor solar projects must be consistent with COMAR 27 subtitle 01, which includes chapter 14, the renewable energy systems chapter, and COMAR 2702 or subtitle 02, which includes processes for local review should a local uh, project come in. So today we are, the staff's recommendation is that the commission concur with the chairman's determination that this text amendment can be processed as a refinement to the county's program, and we further recommend that the chairman approve the text amendment as proposed. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Chair Greer. Thank you. Are there any um, questions? I don't see any questions in the chat. Uh, before we talk to Mr. Hunt, are there any questions from commission members? Uh, Commissioner Hewitt, I, I, I couldn't hear any of it. I got kicked out for the whole thing. So whatever, Lisa, I'm supporting it. I'm sorry I didn't get to hear you. Whatever's going on, Bob, it's not good. Uh, this is Commissioner Taylor. I do have a question about prime agricultural soils and how the new definition compares to the original and why they changed that. Yes, I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Hunt for a response. Bill, you might have to type it in the chat. Yeah, we, we still can't hear you, so if you can type it in, please. Um, the chat in the chat, Mr. Hunt states the original definition in the code misspelled and misabbreviated some soil types. OK, thank, this is Commissioner Taylor again. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Bill. Um, Bill, is there any other information that you would like to share with the commission?
He says, no, ma'am. <laughs> so with that, um, hearing no further questions or discussions, was any public comment submitted? There were no public comments submitted. Okay. So with that, Commissioner Hewitt, is there a motion that the commission concur with the chairman's determination that St. Mary's County Ordinance 2022-06 may be processed as a refinement to the St. Mary's County Critical Area Program? Further, that the proposed changes are consistent with the purposes, policy, and goals of the critical area law and regulation and as such, recommend the chairman approve St. Mary's County Ordinance 2022-06 as proposed. It's so moved, Madam Chair. So moved by Commissioner Hewitt. Is there a second? This is Commissioner Taylor, I'll second. Second by Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are, th are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes um, unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. With that, that moves us to our fourth agenda item, Dorchester County non-water dependent projects in the critical area text amendment. Alex DeWeese is presenting on behalf of um, commission staff, and I will turn it over to Alex. Thank you, Chair Greer. <clears throat> um, good morning again. My name is Alex DeWeese. I'll be pre presenting um, Dorchester County's non-water dependent structures on Pier Bill, which is Bill 2022-2. Um, Dorchester County is highlighted on this map of Maryland in red, so you'll note that it is located on Maryland's lower eastern shore. Dorchester County Council adopted Bill 2022-2 on March 1st of this year. Um, it includes adding the definition of non-water dependent projects in Chapter 68-1 of the County Code, which is the definition section of their critical area program. It also includes language regarding such projects in Chapter 68-5 of the County Code, which is their general requirements section. The county elected not to authorize small renewable energy generating projects on piers with this text amendment. Um, and just as a reminder for everyone, non-water dependent projects are allowed in the critical area as an opt-in provision. Um, and as per, per Natural Resources Article 8-1808.4 and Comar 2701.13, a local jurisdiction may not issue a building permit or any approvals for non-water dependent projects until the commission approves an amendment to the local program, including the re required criteria. So that's why um, you all are reviewing it uh, today. So there are the criteria for non-water dependent structures on piers is included in the attachment to your staff reports. Um, and basically it just outlines how accessory structures and uses are permitted if they are incidental to a commercial use. So um, if the proposed project is in a residential institution, institutional or industrial pier, that would not be permitted. These projects are also only allowed in the intensely developed area, also known as IDA, um, and the projects must obtain all applicable permits um, and they can expand beyond the pier itself and they also can exceed 18 feet in height or 1000 square feet. Staff recommendation is commission concurrence with the chairman's determination to process the text amendment as a refinement to the county's program and the chairman's approval as proposed. Are there any questions at this time? Thank you, Ms. Deweese. Uh, I don't see any questions in the chat. Do the commission members have any questions? I don't hear any. What quiet group today. Um, is anyone from the tap is anyone from Dorchester County um, on the line that wanted to address the commission? I don't believe they were joining us today, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I well, no one's speaking up, so I think you're right. And uh, were there any pub for the record? Were there any public comments submitted? There were no public comments submitted. Thank you. So with that, is there a motion to concur with the chairman's determination 
that Dorchester County Bill 2022-2 may be processed as a refinement to Dorchester County's critical area program. Further, that the proposed changes are consistent with the purposes, policies, and goals of the critical area law and regulation, and as such, recommend the chairman approve Dorchester Bill 2022-2 as proposed. Do I have a motion to that effect? This is Commissioner Ferguson, so moved. Moved by Commissioner Ferguson. Is there a second? I'll second Commissioner Taylor. Second by Commissioner Taylor. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. The final item on the agenda is the Town of Easton Critical Area Program Comprehensive Review, uh, Talbot County. And Mr. Kelly, I think Nick Kelly is presenting on behalf of staff. So Nick, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Chair Greer. Uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, what we have presented for you today is the Town of Easton's Comprehensive Review. Um, just a couple things. Um, first, um, unfortunately, um, the town planner, Lynn Thomas, sends his apologies. He could not make it today, uh, but don't, uh, don't feel too sorry. He is in San Diego at the APA conference, and he may be on his way back, but he's in a much better climate than we are. Um, with that said, um, I know as Chair Greer has asked this before, um, the conditions that we're going to talk about at the end, uh, Annie Sikarik and I met with the town uh, two weeks ago to go over these changes and they were supportive of all of the changes and, and had no issues with it. Uh, second, since it's May 4th, which is Star Wars Day, you may see some Star Wars Easter eggs throughout the slides just to kind of make things a little bit more entertaining. So um, please have a laugh at that this morning if you feel like you want to do that. Uh, so just as a heads up, uh, of course, the town of Easton is located in Talbot County. Um, if you're driving from the Bay Bridge towards Ocean City, it's the town that you go through probably about, I'd say about maybe 20, 30 minutes after you uh, get over the bridge, depending on traffic. Um, but yes, it's in the center of Talbot County. Um, similar to what uh, Annie discussed this morning with the town of Denton, this is a comprehensive view for the town of Easton in accordance with Natural Resources Article 8-1809G and 8-1809P. Uh, the last comprehensive update the town did is 2013, so um, they're in today making their updates. Um, their mapping update was done in 2015 as part of the commission's um, statute requiring digitized maps for the critical area. There was a slight change as well in 2016 that had to do with an RCA piece of land that was misidentified and should have been IDA that the commission reviewed and approved back in 2016. Uh, so their maps are up to date. They're actually one of the first towns to come through with the mapping update as Talbot was the first county to come through with their mapping update. Uh, overall, uh, they once again, similar to Denton, followed the model ordinance, um, which was given to them by a commission staff. I want to thank uh, Andy Sikarik and Jennifer Esposito, who worked with the town on this update um, over the past year, year and a half. Uh, the only two significant um, items to sort of outline, one is they also included the non-water dependent structures on Pierce language to allow commercial non-water dependent projects in the IDA, as well as small scale renew renewable energy generating systems on piers in the critical area. Um, second, they added language to allow emergency communications towers within the critical area, and that would be all three designations, IDA, LDA, and RCA. Um, that is included in their supplemental uses section, and it is only for towers owned by a governmental agency that meet a public need and is not solely for the purposes of a commercial enterprise. Um, just as a heads up, this is the map that was approved back in 2015 with the revision 2016, and I threw the Millennium Falcon over here because I just wanted to point out this section, which is also part of the town, which um, just is sort of a, an interesting that is where Cook's Hope is located, and Cook's Hope is one of my favorite farms to drive by if you're in Talbot because they have belted Galloway cows. Um, and there has been some critical area development nearby, but if you're ever heading towards Oxford or have time to go through Easton, just drive by there because it's just neat to see, see the cows. So I just wanted to point those, those guys out. In terms of the recommended changes, uh, these changes are 
essentially some updates that were just some oversights when I talked to Lynn, who mentioned there were some minor oversights they just missed. And then some of the other changes are a result of the water dependent facilities regulations update that the commission approved in January that became effective in February. Um, so in the overlay district section, there was some language added that the notwithstanding language, which just says that if the critical area laws and regulations are updated before the next comprehensive review for the town, those laws and regulations are still uh, effective. Added a purpose statement to the critical area ordinance purpose and goals section. In the development standards, added a couple minor changes to the IDA section for 10%, um, to the R RCA section, which was a change, recent change in our regs about no variances for density. Um, buffer section, one of the tables had just recently been updated, so we revised that. And then the town missed a little bit of language that provided more flexibility for plantings, which is in accordance with our buffer regulations. So we added those as well. Um, as I mentioned before, the water dependent facilities regulations were just updated, so we added that language to bring it up to speed with the new regulations. Um, growth allocation, a couple more clarifications. They have existing alternative adjacency standard language. Uh, we just added a couple couple lines of wording to make it more clear when that is used can be used. Um, and then also some language to make sure that the town has the authority to enforce buffer management plans, habitat protection plans, and any other thing approved as part of a commission's growth allocation approval. Then finally, added a couple definitions that had been changed as a result of that recent update to the regulations. And then this, their supplemental uses section, once again, that has to deal with the water dependent facilities regulations that were just updated. So those are all outlined in attachment one. Um, once again, I did talk to Lynn Thomas, the town planner. He had absolutely no issues with any of these um, changes whatsoever and was fine with the recommendations that um, staff is proposing today. Um, so with that recommendation um, that Chewbacca is not me, but people might mix me up with him. Uh, we do recommend concurrence with the chairman's determination and we recommend approval with the condition that the text exit text edits described in attachment one are incorporated to the town zoning code within 120 days. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank, thanks, Nick. Are there any questions from the commission members for Nick? Okay, moving right along then. Um, were there any public comments submitted? Not that there I'm were no public comments submitted. Okay, so uh, with that, then is there a motion, Commissioner McCarthy, um, that the commission concur with the chairman's determination that the comprehensive review of the town of Easton's critical area program may be processed as a refinement to the town of Easton's critical area program. Further, that the proposed changes are consistent with the purposes, policy and goals of the critical area law and regulation and as such recommend the chairman approve the town of Easton's comprehensive review with the conditions in edit set forth in, ta in attachment one to the revised staff report dated May 4th, 2022. And so long as such conditions and changes are incorporated into the town's code within 120 days of the chair's uh, chairman's approval. Commissioner McCarthy, I believe you're on the line. Do I have a motion to that effect? Yes, you have a motion. And is there a second? Is there a second to Commissioner McCarthy's motion? I'll second. This is Commissioner Taylor. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. Commissioner Taylor seconds. All those uh, commission members in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there aye. any opposed? Whoops, I, did I miss someone? Oh, okay. Are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, whoops. Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. So Mr. Kelly will keep right along with that. May the fourth be with you, right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and I think that concludes the business of the program um, subcommittee. I see um, I see Ms. Chairman Deegan um, on the line. How are you? 
And unless there is something for the good of the order, I think uh, we are adjourned until one o'clock. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Well, with that, we'll conclude the program subcommittee meeting and see everybody at one o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.